day, day five. Nothing happened during the night. And at 5.30 a.m. on January the 27th, the column moved out. After advancing nearly six miles, the advance guard came upon a rebel picket of ten men, of whom seven were captured, two killed, and one escaped. The command was rapidly brought up and went to the nearest route to Freeman's camp. Several shots were fired, but at our advancing, the whole force dashed into the camp, but the rebels had slipped out on a by road. Bomber sent the best guard and one squadron in charge of Captain Ribble in pursuit of them. The collected, collected the remainder of his forces and placed the prisoners and lead horses in the center of the column and followed the advance guard. Freeman's train was overtaken and the wagons containing camp equipment, officers' clothing were destroyed by fire. Twelve mules and a number of horses were captured. Eight men were killed. Among them, the Captain Franks. Also, seven men were taken prisoner. Now, here, this Captain Franks that they're talking about, I've got a, an exchange between Freeman and Livingston over the fate of Captain Franks. This is a letter from Colonel Freeman to Colonel Livingston dated February the 10th. Dear Sir, the four prisoners I sent by Lieutenant Wasson were captured by me yesterday and I intend to send them by Lieutenant Evans, but they were in a different place. He did not get them. I sent them under a flag of truce with Lieutenant Watson. Their names are as follows. John B. Stillwell, Company L, 11th Missouri. Alexander Gray, Sergeant, Company F, 11th Missouri. John Beasley, Company L, 11th Missouri. Joseph Wyatt, Company L, 11th Missouri. I wish to exchange these for Jesse Riggs, and Frank Criswell, supposedly who had been captured yesterday, and Joseph Orr and William Hill. I have always treated your soldiers kindly when taken. I understand from Captain Wolf that Captain Monks, Captain Monks was a, a Union captain under the command of Livingston. So I understand from Captain Wolf that Captain Monks' company, during last week, captured two soldiers of Captain Wolf's company while at home on leave of absence and kill them after they had surrendered. I desire to inform you, for you to inform me in writing by Lieutenant Watson, whether you hold yourself responsible for the acts of Captain Monk. If you do not, I will know how, what to do with Captain Monk's men. And if you do, I will be compelled to retaliate upon any of your soldiers when they're captured. My soldiers are captured and killed you will know that your comrades will retaliate. I also learned that your men shot Captain Franks after he had surrendered when my train was taken at Sillamore. He was not killed but badly shot in several places. Please inform me if this conduct is tolerated by you. If so, we will be compelled to retaliate, a thing which I am very unwilling to commence. Captain Franks is not a captain now, but only a private, but was formerly a captain in the Confederate States Army. He is a gentleman and an excellent man, and my men must not be treated badly when taken. <coughs> if the men we demand are not with you, Lieutenant Wesson will make arrangements for the exchange of any others that you may have. Any other matters which Lieutenant Wesson may make in regard to the exchange will be approved by me and signed T.R. Freeman, Colonel, commanding the regiment. <coughs> and he says, P.S., I learned since above was written that some of my soldiers were in charge of one of your wounded men. I shall parole him for protection against thieves and robbers and stand or let him go to you, T.R. Freeman, commanding. This is Livingston's response to Colonel Freeman. Colonel, I have the honor to acknowledge receipt of Captain Roach and 22 men of the 11th Missouri Cavalry, prisoners of war, conveyed and delivered to me this day under the flag of truce in the charge of First Lieutenant W.G. Wasson, Company D of your regiment. I have to inform you that a steamer left this point lately. I sent off all Confederate prisoners on hand at this station on board of her to Little Rock. Among them, a number of your men, all that I had, but have arranged with Lieutenant Watson, uh, 
whom you have authorized to act for you, so that in the event of my not capturing sufficient number of your command before the departure of the next mail, I shall send for all those named by you belonging to your command, trusting I may not have to do so, but my scouting parties now may make us square in a few days. <clears throat> they would just trade men with each other once they captured them and swap them back. In answer to your remarks about the conduct of Monk's men and the killing of Captain Frank, I would state that I scorn to murder a prisoner, and my command had the same spirit. I have no doubt that you have been opposed upon by some parties desirous of manufacturing yarns out of whole cloth. Captain Frank was mortally wounded after a hard chase and considerable firing to him and others, and was not dead when left near the road, but he was given up past hope. I do not believe a word about the report of Monk's men doing any act of the kind described to them. I have told him in his command that I would hang any one of them who vented any vindication or excuse me, any vindictive feelings on any captured soldier or maltreated them. Ask your men sent to you by Captain Wolf how they were treated. They can state whether beyond any enforcement of prison rules was irksome to them. If your men will shed U.S. uniforms, it is no further danger of their being hurt than that which any brave man faces when facing glorious music of war. I am Colonel R. R. Livingston. So he, he denies that Franks was Thank you. 